Hello, my name is Chris. I use Maya on Linux, and today we're going to show you how to install Maya 2026 on Fedora 42. So there has been some big breakthroughs as to how to get Maya installed on newer Linux distributions like Fedora 42, and this will hopefully be a very comprehensive guide as to how to do exactly that. So let's get started. So firstly, the thing you're going to need is an X11 desktop. Right now I have a uh, Fedora KDE running in a virtual machine because I already have it installed on my desktop with uh, an X11 DE. So KDE still has the X11 session. Uh, GNOME does not, as far as I'm aware. So you have to go and grab an X11 desktop or window manager. So something like KDE X11, Mate, um, XFCE, or I've even ran Maya on uh, i3. And it's not that bad if as long as you get it all set up. Um, the next thing you're going to have to do is I'm going to go into, uh, my downloads here is you're going to need the latest versions of the Autodesk identity manager, the Autodesk licensing service, and obviously Maya itself. Um, I have Maya 2024 installed on my main system, but you can get the latest version of Maya running great on, uh, Fedora 42 if you follow the directions going forth. So... As far as where to get the Identity Manager and Licensing Installer, you're going to have to go to your Autodesk account and go to the Products and Updates pages. So you're going to have to go to the Products and Services page to Product Updates after signing in to your Autodesk account. So if you're using the student version, just log in with your student uh, account, which you're using to get your Autodesk product and go all the way until you find the identity manager for Linux and the licensing service for Linux. You need the latest versions in order for this to work. The other thing you will need is all the libraries required to make Maya run, which on uh, Fedora, it shouldn't be that hard, but a good reference to find where all the required libraries for Autodesk Maya are is you just have to do a quick Google search. Uh, all you have to do is just come to here, I know it says 2024, to the additional acquired libraries for Linux and just go through all of these and find uh, a way to install them. Just go to your terminal and install these packages, which in my case, I have most of these and uh, it's not going to be that hard. Hey, this is Chris again, a little addendum in the middle of the video. So I said before that you're going to have to go and get additional libraries for Maya. So a good way to check to see what kind of libraries you will need is to actually go to the Maya bin directory and hit the LDD command. So the location of the Maya bin directory would be in user Autodesk Maya 2026, or in my case, 2024, because I'm back on my desktop bin. And then here is where Maya will be installed. So then you just do LDD Maya dot bin, then you pipe it to grep and then not found. If it returns nothing, that means you have all the libraries required for Maya. I highly recommend also doing this for the other Autodesk um, licensing tools you have, such as the identity manager. So those would be located in slash opt slash Autodesk. And then inside here, those are the directories for the Autodesk Identity Manager and the licensing service. So this is, would be the location where the Autodesk licensing services would be. And if you don't have the, if any of the LED commands return, returns a not found, all you have to do is do a DNF provides and then the library it needs. So let's say you don't have libtiff. So let's do libtiff and then it'll return the package that you will need to install for your uh, missing library. So that's what you need to do in case you're missing anything. And back to the video. All right, so let's actually get to installing Maya proper. So the first thing I'd recommend you do is I'd recommend, I'd highly recommend you install Maya via your command line because I think it's just going to be much easier to go monitor um, 
how the processes are going. So let's just go to where the Maya installation setup file is. So that should be in my downloads and inside Autodesk Maya. Boom. So we're going to go to setup right here. So we're going to do dot slash setup and then just it's just like installing Maya normally, just follow the instructions and you should be good. Just agree to the terms and then just hit install. And all you have to do is wait. I'm running in a VM, so this may take a while. All right, it looks like the install has finished. So now we can move on to the next step. So we cannot actually start Maya yet. So we're gonna have to install a couple more things first before we go and do this. Firstly, the thing we're gonna, one of the first things we're gonna have to do is make a symlink to libtiff. Since Maya uses an older version of libtiff that isn't shipped in Fedora anymore. So we're going to have to go back into our command line and enter this command. So as you can see, we are just going to go from make a siblink from our lib64 of libtiff6 to our Maya installation folder. So depending on what version of Maya you have, just change this from Maya 2026 to 2024, 2025, 2027, anything in there. So then we just hit enter, enter my super secret password, and that sim link should be created. <clears throat> so now the next thing we're gonna have to do is in order for the licensing services to properly work is we're gonna have to install another library. So we need to do, um, we need to install WebKit to GTK4. So we do sudo dnf install webkit to gtk4. So I believe I already have this installed in this virtual machine. So if I hit enter, it's going to look through repositories and tell me it should be here. That's right. So in some cases you will have WebKit 2 GTK4 installed already. Um, I do remember, I believe Fedora Workstation, meaning the GNOME version has uh, WebKit 2 GTK4 installed already. The KDE version does not. So just make sure you have this uh, package installed. Next, what we're going to do is install the rest of the licensing services. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back into our Autodesk directory here and unzip the identity manager and licensing installer uh, folders that we have here. So we just have to go with open your archiving tool and extract that. Next, we do the identity manager. <clears throat> so now we have both of the packages we need to install unarchived. So let's go to our licensing installer in our command line because we're going to have to launch a shell script. So we're going to have to go into the licensing installer full directory. So we just go ls and I believe it is ADSK licensing installer, if I can spell it correctly. and then go in one more. And now we have this install.sh file. So make sure we um, make sure this can be executable. So we do a chmod plus x install.sh and then we can run the shell script sudo dot slash install.sh. And it should install all of our um, licensing packages. Okay. It looks like it finished installing perfectly. So now we need to install the identity manager. So let's get back out of here. And to get back out of a directory, you just do CD dot dot. And now we have to install the identity manager. So we can just go to CD Autodesk identity manager. And then all we have to do here is just do a dot slash setup and enter our password and we should be able to graphically install the identity manager. All right, it finished installing. Now we can get back out. And now this is the fun part. Now we're going to have to make a dummy RPM, which contains um, a library that is needed for the identity manager to function. So 
the thing that we're going to need to install is a dummy RPM version of WebKit 2 GTK3. Now you're probably wondering, wait, you already told me to install WebKit 2 GTK4. How come it needs GTK3? Well, the reason being is that the identity manager, according to um, this Autodesk forum post, it says it uses the RPM command in order to find WebKit 2 GTK3. And if we do not have this installed, the identity manager or in the licensing service will not function at all. So we're going to have to make a fake version of this RPM. And that's going to be done with this shell script right here provided for us by David Osler. So before we do that, we have to make sure we are able to build an RPM package. And in order to do that, we will need the RPM development tools package or rather group. So a good way to find this is to do a DNF group list rep RPM. And upon looking through, this is the package we will need. So let's just copy this with a control shift C and then sudo DNF group install and then put that in there. And that should allow this to download the RPM development tools package group. So now it just finished installing the RPM development tools. So now what we're going to have to do is copy and paste this and turn it into a shell script. So what I'd recommend you do is load up your favorite text editor, such as Kate or Nano or text on Gnome or uh, Pluma on Mate and uh, just copy and paste the script. In my case, I'm going to use Vim and I'm going to name this script make webkit to gtk3 underscore dummy dot sh. So now that we're in here, let's just go and copy and paste this script. I will leave a link to this page on the in the description. So now we just copy and pasted the script. Let's just get out of here. And then let's make sure this script is executable. Just like last time we do a ch mod plus x for the WebKit 2 dummy sh. Now all we have to do is a sudo slash make WebKit dummy dot sh. And now the RPM should be built and ready to go. Now the RPM is installed. Now these parts are more optional, but sometimes you will have to do this step. So in the case of all my practice runs of this tutorial, I did not need to re register the identity manager in order for it to work. But in our case, you may sometimes have to run this command. In my case, it just hangs like this. Um, I'd recommend just running the command once. And if you have a, if your console hangs for around a minute or two minutes, then just uh, exit up exit out of the command because it most likely doesn't need this most likely doesn't need to happen <clears throat> other things you may need to do are make sure to update your desktop entries and also set the identity manager as a default for opening in our case i do not think we need to do this but be sure to run these commands if you are so inclined or you think you will need to do this or if the identity manager still does not work in any case, now all we have to do is just run Maya in our console and it should load up. As you can see, now we have the login screen and we can just hit sign in. And it leads us directly into our Autodesk sign in. Go to the product, open the link. And now Maya should pop up. Yes. Okay, now we have Maya loaded up. I'm an experienced user and we can just make a new project and we can just start getting to work. Like I said before, my virtual machine is very slow. So that's why the performance for Maya right now is pretty awful. But in the case of whatever desktop you're using, if you set up your GPU drivers properly, you should be just fine. Okay, now we have Maya loaded up. So now all we have now we can just get straight to work. We can use all of our normal commands just fine and just get straight 
to using Maya like we normally could. The other thing is that you will not need to run Maya again from the console every time in order for you to launch it. You can easily find Maya directly inside of your um, application launcher of choice, rather that be uh, the KDE launcher or Rofi or what have, whatever you choose to use on your specific Linux desktop. So do I think this is all worth it? Yes, I do think it's worth it. But for some of you, it may not be. If you need Maya for school and you really want to give Linux a try, I do think Maya on Linux is pretty great. But again, this is this is quite a bit of setup in order for you just to run one stinking program, especially if you're paying money for it like I am. So um, hopefully once the time Maya is compatible with RHEL 10, with Red Hat 10, then hopefully all these issues will be fixed and we don't have to make our these uh, crazy shell scripts and such to get it working. But for the meantime, this is what we're going to have to do. And we'll just deal with it because Maya is a great program. So in any case, support the Blender project if you're so inclined because um, Maya needs some competition. But I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you get Maya working on your system.